Hey everyone, welcome back. Now that the Valentine's update is live, this also means the new augments are all here. If you haven't seen my past four videos, these augments are for Yureli, Gauss, Frost, and Grendel. Today, we're taking a closer look at what we can do with Frost's augments. Now, I'm sure you've seen a couple of videos around recently on this ever since the update dropped, but I want to finally give my own perspective on some testings and findings. This is an interesting setup and also takes some inspiration from a friend. Asim DM'd me a concept for a Biting Frost setup over the past few days to take a look over, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I'll be showcasing both of these off today. Now, what is Biting Frost? It's a general Frost Augment not tied to any of his abilities, but it requires the frozen state of enemies, so realistically you will only get this out of his 4, and to a certain extent his 3, and also his 1. Now, you may have seen a Thermal Transfer Frost already floating around, that's not going to be the main highlight of this video, but it will have a use. Interestingly, the cold conversion from Thermal Sunder will freeze enemies and let you set up on Frost as well. However, his 4 already has more range and goes through walls, so we'll be referring to that to freeze. Let's see what we're up to today. As you may know, the most recent update completely borked Gunseo and also Seo on a ton of weapons and other things. A lot of stuff no longer works well and some things are completely broken. Like, Zymos no longer double dipping crits, however the secondary projectiles still apply a second crit layer additively instead of multiplicatively, so it's still usable but flat crit now from Avengers is mandatory on it. Anyways, what I can say is the clip scaling of Gun Seo remains intact on most weapons that had it. Only now, Gunseo is also applying full base damage to each individual pellet of weapons that have multiple hits, such as most shotguns, Piranha, etc. Basically, a very, very rough idea is if it has 10 pellets, it now does 10 times more damage. That's not exactly how it works, but an extremely general concept on what's going on. Maybe I'll go more into that in the future if DE doesn't fix it. But today is about existing Gunseo interactions and the Frost Augment, so let's begin. Biting Frost is an extremely valuable augment, but only if you can reliably freeze enemies to kill them. It works like a normal crit chance and crit damage mod and isn't flat stats. Now honestly, I do believe this should be tweaked to be as passive, because it is a bit asinine that this requires a mod slot and also can't be used on any other frame. His current passive is also dog shit. His 2 can't even freeze enemies, because freeze is a unique state that has nothing to do with cold procs. But essentially, this augment is stronger than vital sense and bladed rounds and point strike combined. 3 weapon mods in 1, a massive slot saver and even fits on your frame instead of the weapon. Now it doesn't have as a massive impact on rifles since we have hunting munitions for slash as well as vital sense being actually decent for crit scaling and critical delay. So for anything that already bypasses armor, this augment isn't as useful, but for pistols which lack a 4 slash outside of hemorrhage, this crit bonus is extremely useful as biting frost builds do not lend themselves to full strip setups as the range, strength, and efficiency requirements are all pretty high for that. Biting frost also does not scale with strength, so you can actually run negative strength setups like I showed in my previous frost video earlier this week. This is the frost build I'm using. It's a bit different from the frost build I showcased last time. If you want to use the one that includes freeze force, check out that early biting frost review at the top right. This frost has roar with just 70 strength. The regular intensify should be umbral though if I had the right polarities for it, but it interferes with my other builds. Otherwise with growing power this build would reach 109 strength. Because of the casting frequency on this build and the AoE weapon potential, you will have 100% uptime on growing power. 109 strength gives us a 32.7% roar. We're actually running a dot build, so with a prime bane of 55%, the double dip will make roar plus bane do 1.877 squared times more damage, or 3.5 times more damage. 160 efficiency lets us spam our 4 as much as we need with that massive 235 range to cover a 35 meter radius. This will literally freeze the entire tile. It does hit through walls and that's why I don't use thermal sunder here. 7.6 seconds freeze too with 95 duration, which is barely enough to keep roar comfortable at 28.5 second duration. Snow Globe is still on the build for area denial if you need it as his 2 was actually useless and replaced with roar. But perhaps most interesting is his 1. We have a Theorem Demulchant on this build that can buff weapons with elements based on our Kit Gun Arcanes. I am bringing a Kit Gun with a Toxin Arcane, which will combine with Frost 1 to make Viral. This ability always has a 6 meter AoE and always applies 6 status effects of Cold. But with this setup, it will be a 6 meter AoE of 6 stacks of Viral. Instead, for an instant 2.25 multiplier to all damage we do. Also, spammable and cheap to get you up to 10 Viral Sacks if you want that, because we even have Natural Talent on the build to deal with the longer cast of his 4. Energize also helps with that energy economy because if it procs once, our bar completely refills. If your shields break, roll for guard and cast your 3 or 4, then set up for shield regen. 
We don't have Preach for Spites or Support Pistol with Augur Mods this time. So I brought a Worm, which if you want Endurance, I would say Jin instead since it has infinite lives through Reawaken. But the Sentinel build will be a Burst Laser, the only Pistol Sentinel weapon in the entire game that can carry two Augur Mods as a stat stick. The Sentinel itself? This. Negate blocks pesky status effects like Slash or Heat, or even Toxin, though the Toxin damage might outright kill you since it bypasses shields. But it can block 1 status effects once every 5 seconds, on cooldown, essentially builds 1 stack like Mesmer skin. Synth set to holster reload weapons as needed, and typical vacuum and radar, alongside regen. But most importantly, we have this Guardian mod. This mod gives you an instant shield top up once every 30 seconds when your shield breaks, a second shield gate window, if you will. More time to react for rolling guard, and thus less likely to die. Fired Up is just a relic from a different Sentinel build with Verglass to DPS, so you can ignore that. Now, the DPS weapon of choice? I chose a Catch Moon pistol today for a very specific reason. This is built with Catch Moon, Killstream, and Haymaker. Now, this build could use another form, but I have polarity problems on the four configs for fitting the last slot. For the x list, you definitely want lethal momentum, as look at this 8 to 16 meter falloff. It's extremely severe. Catch Moon, I think, loses like 90% of its damage at max range and actually disappears at 16 meters. Lethal will at least carry that back out to 11.2 to 22.4 meters, which, while it doesn't look like much, you will definitely feel it as the standard engagement distance is typically around 10 to 15 meters. This is a pure slash build with innate heat. You may notice something interesting though. We have that residual viremia here. That is what is going to give us toxin damage once Theorem Demulsion triggers off the residual toxin pools. This arcane makes pools on kitgun gills, simple as that, and the type you pick will determine what element demulsion will add onto your weapon. See, why we build for pure raw damage and crits for slashing? Because gas doesn't scale up elements either, so it goes hand in hand with the good old slash build. Slash is there to easily set up our merciless stacks and turn those gas procs monstrous. Finally, this gunslinger slot can be anemic agility. I once again couldn't fit it because of polarity problems. But even anemic agility will keep you below 2.5 fire rate for a double effect on hemorrhage. Now, are you ready for some crazy math? This is a gas catch moon with Slash. We currently have innate base 100% crit damage and 110% from prime target cracker. Biting Frost will double that with 200% crit damage scaling. We have the weapons in 835 base crit and pistol gamut to give us 100. Biting Frost will push this up to 170 with 200% more crit chance. So that augment alone roughly doubles the crit damage scaling and nearly pushes up a full crit tier. It is essentially a 3 times total damage bonus in practice. Then we have this Galvanized Shot mod. Gun Seal still works like before in Catch Moon, and before it was working like Eclipse here. So, a multiplicative of final damage. Force impact, slash procs, heat, and gas means you're doing 4 procs. 4 procs means 480% more damage, or 5.8 times final damage scaling, since it gives Eclipse buff. We still do need base damage though, so I'm slotting on Hornet Strike. But then, we have the Bane. A primed Bane for 55% more damage, and also Aurora giving 32.7%. And because we're going gas, this will double dip the universal Bane multipliers for a 3.52 times more damage. And gas can headshot on the dots, meaning it will double dip the headshot multipliers, so that's another 4 times damage scaling here. I didn't use Deadhead Arcane because the Pistol Arcane is bugged and resets for some reason on headshot gas kills. But this also cuts Catchman Reload down to just 1 second using Merciless, which is nice. So where does this leave us? The Augment for 3 times scaling, Gun Seal for 5.8 times scaling, Banes for 3.52 scaling with Roar, Headshots for 4 times scaling, and they're all multiplicative to each other. These make the resulting gas dots do 245 times more damage than normal. And get this, the biggest problem with gas was that it is capped to 10 stacks, besides the fact it doesn't scale with elements. But Catch Moon doesn't proc a ton of gas, so you can keep ramping up this 240 times multiplier every shot. A single shot is enough to kill most enemies on Steel Path, and the resulting gas clouds can do well over 100k damage on lower armored enemies, and you even get overlapping gas clouds that is what makes gas super strong, and is where grouping will be super useful in this setup as well. That's where Megas Anomaly comes in. The build is so strong though that it isn't needed and even on single enemies they will still die. Especially because we also have hemorrhage on the build. And if you want more damage, the Theorem Demulchant not only turns this catch me to slash, but frosts one into viral. So if you cast this one before you shoot, that's six viral stacks in AoE for an instant 2.25 times additional multiplier. If you wanted another ridiculous easy peasy hilarious weird build that instantly treads anything you touch, this is it. Have fun. 
The alternative setup that Azim showed me, well, you can put Thermal Transfer on Frost. You can also run Augur Reach instead of Overextended for more cramped tile sets, and preserve 175 range still for that 26 meter radius freeze and 169 strength for a 67.6% armor strip, before accounting for heat procs lowering a further multiplicative 50% off. This technically also lets you run Brief Respite for better shield gating. Not only does this allow OP heat inherent setups, but it also allows for on-demand elemental conversion mid-mission. You can get Gas Cold on weapon setups this way on literally any weapon by just modding Toxin. This is extremely useful for various reasons. Say you're running an AoE weapon, now you can do Gas Clouds that will kill anything that gets close to it while it lingers and still fit Hunter Munitions on the weapon. And you also still get Toxin because of their Demulchants onto your Freeze on your 1, so now you can get Viral even without having it on your weapon. You don't want the gas? Then just use the cold buff and now you have Viral alone. Yes, Freezing Vorce can do this too, but the point of Thermal Transfer here is the flexibility. And if you want to just kill Corpus, then you just don't buff at all and keep the pure Toxin damage. Thermal Transfer Frost gives you a setup that lets you pick between Pure Toxin with Slash, Viral with Slash, and Gas with Slash all in the same mission with the push of a button. And obviously also lets you put massive heat in inherent setups without having to put any heat on your DPS weapon at all if you want to go that route. For examples of heat inherent on Thermal Transfer Frost, check out my previous video on Biting Frost earlier this week linked in the description and pinned. It's the same one as what I mentioned at the start of the video. The gas can be lethal on AoE launches by opening slots for more reload speed or fire rate and magazine size. And the heat inherent will let you reach monstrous heat scaling just like Amber with Fireball Frenzy once exclusively could. But the biggest candidate for Biting Frost? You may not have noticed it because it hasn't gotten the spotlight ever since Gun Arcanes and Galvanize mods, but it's Melee. Melee only gets 90% crit damage from Organ Shatter, and even with Gladiator Might, it only reaches 150% scaling. Biting Frost alone is way stronger than this, giving 200% crit damage and also using a Warframe slot instead. The crit damage Biting Frost gives alone more than doubles your damage output if you already have Organ Shatter on the build. And then you also get the crit chance, which is nearly equal to a free sacrificial steal. This makes melees insanely strong with the Biting Frost setup, but more importantly, can also turn AoE Glaives into absolutely ridiculous nukes. So why not just throw a Glaive Prime onto this setup too? Instant red crits everywhere, and nothing can touch you because they're frozen, and ridiculous damage scaling on AoE. Or, you can do some other heavy attack memes with Vertilac without having to mod any heat on the weapon at all, as you have Thermal Transfer's heat buff. Or you could pull your favorite trusty melee, which for me in this case would be Orthos or Guandao Primes. Both of them slash nicely and get fat scaling from Biting Frost, which helps immensely since Gladiator Might on them has since been wanting to be replaced for Boreal's Contempt as it is a strictly superior mod, but this means we lose the crit chance Gladiator set bonus, which Biting Frost easily accounts for. And as for Spore Lacer, well I didn't include it because I don't own a DPS Spore Lacer, I only have a primer one for special setups. But I'm sure you've seen Spore Lacer showcases already recently on a different channel. Hopefully this video gives you a true scope on what Biting Frost can accomplish. I really do wish it was as passive, and it's a bit annoying and limiting on how you can use it, but when you have a loadout for it, it's insanely powerful and opens up many doors for damage potentials and quality of life aspects. And the final bonus? By having Viral on your weapons and your 1, you can cast your Snow Globe on anything you don't feel like shooting. They will get shoved out and die if they collide with Geometry, as the collision damage inflicts 50% of their HP, as true damage and now gets multiplied by Viral. Anything that isn't dead is going to be super slow to get back up because of the cold stacks. And uh, now you're ready for your avalanche freeze and nuke on them too. A frost setup that can finally do it all? Yes siree, though a rework should still be in the books in my eyes. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering all the new war stuff and these new augments. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.